I'm Stacey J. And I'm Chuck Durant. Welcome to part two with the phenomenal, unstoppable, amazing Stevie Ballard. Can you tell we love her? <laughs> we love her. Let's go <laughs> Here there we now. Go. But let's talk a little bit about, because you're talking about your classes and what you teach and you're going through all this in, uh, incredible, incredible information. And I got to say, man, that if I was going to work with somebody... Uh, Chuck uh, is going to start, he's going to start his animation career. I'm going to start my Breaking animation career. News, if I was going to work with somebody, I would totally want to work with you. Yes. Because not only are you freaking cool and you're cute. <laughs> hey, she, she's almost, she's right? Stunning. She's Am stunning. Am I a sex symbol? No. I you're you still are. a sex symbol. But no, no beyond, <laughs> I I'm beyond that, man, you are talented. You're a director. Director, you're casting your talent, the whole thing, yeah. and it's like, why wouldn't people want to? I mean, you probably have like lines around the block. <laughs> so how do but, these people? How do people get a hold of you if they want to work with you? Well, you know, everybody just get tracks me down on on internet. You know, uh, is, it, uh, is there an email they well, go to? to find out there... about your tuned in work. I mean, obviously, yeah. no. We need to qualify. If Let's I want to be in a cartoon with Stevie, you don't just show up at her session. No. No, we're talking about for the tuned in animation workshops, working with you as a as a coach privately is is the best way to go to stevievalance.com and get your, your news of where you're going to be because you're all over the place. Well, I mean, tunedin.ca, T-O-O-N-E-D-I-N.ca, that is my website uh, for my workshops. Okay. And you can just put stevie at tunedin.ca. Um, there's an event page on there. It'll have up and coming workshops. I honestly don't teach that much. Um, I'm, I'm really, you know, working as a voice director now. So in between, like right now I'm on, I'm on hiatus. I'm just waiting for the third season pickup of wild grinders, yeah. keeping everything yes. crossed. And, um, I worked on a show for Disney junior last year as well. I'm hoping to hear, uh, from them on something as well. So, you know, while I'm waiting, I teach because my friends, uh, I, I was starting to lose friends because they were like, why don't you, why don't you put us in your shows? <laughs> and uh, it's really hard because I only have six spots, you know, on a cast. Yeah. And, we, and, and I always cast multi-voiced characters. We never bring in outside incidentals unless, say, on Wild Grinders, we had the, the athletes who yeah. weren't actors mm -hmm. that came on. So it's very rare. Um that will that will bring unless they're a big star and I haven't I haven't been working on those budgets yet those budget shows yet but something that you should remember too I just want to say here so not to take things personally um, realistically I didn't know this when I was a voice actor that you know a callback situation I only have four hours in person I've done all the MP3 screening now I'm down to the say five actors per role kind of level now what yeah. we've got an executive and a network person and they're there at the audition and we're meeting you and you've got to have the great attitude as well now because you've got the personality thing. You know, um, not to take it personally if I can't just put you in the callbacks or something because if you do the math on how many minutes there are in four hours, I can only audition, say, with a pee break, five actors per hour. And they each have 10 minutes each. Right. Right. And they're auditioning for three or four, five characters each. So that gives them, what, about two minutes per character. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they've got to be, they've got to hit the road running. So they've got to be really good at just, you know, that first three words out of their mouth. Same yeah. thing, you know, mm -hmm. even when it's live. And, and it, it's good to know that your demo has to be hot in order to get in you know, to get an audition with me, well, you know, you can send definitely then uh, your a I will accept it from your agent because I've heard demo that agent has sent the demo first. Then I'm going to be more, I'm going to say, yeah, send me so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. Then, you know, you get the call back and, um, you know, it's just, it's good to know that you, you don't, you ha not to take it personally. You know, that's what, four hours, that's 20 people. Yeah, 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 that yeah I absolutely. Possibly see. Yeah. This is a lot of inside information you're giving us like, here. It's today. really good to remember that and not take it personally, you know. Yeah. And also that, you know, you're making a great impression on the next time too. If mm -hmm. you don't, if you don't get in, if you don't get past, if you don't get the part, you know. Yeah. Right. Um, but I'm looking for multi voiced people with the exception of children. It's just so important to get your repertoire going. If somebody wants to be a serious contender in animation, how many voices should they have a part of their repertoire? Ah, oh, such a good question. First of all, it's not voices. 
It's characters. Characters, mm-hmm. excuse People me. People come to me all the time. No, it's a really good thing. And I say voices too, and I mean characters. I mean characters. He meant characters. <laughs> you Canadians are so serious. You're so literal. <laughs> <laughs> in America, have... that's what it means. Yeah, in America, <laughs> voices means characters. Don't you know anything? Well, okay. I mean, I'm in America because I'm in Canada too. I'm actually an American citizen too. I'm I'm both. I'm bi, as they say. But yeah. um, you know, char- character voices. Uh, I mean, like full heart and soul. You've got a history. You've got relationships. Um, you're the voice is from here up. The character heart and soul is from here down. Yeah, yep. So the ten percent is a place to start. The ninety percent is what's going to get you the part. Right. So um, if you were to have twenty five, I'm going to say characters that are fully developed. Um, that would be like I wouldn't, uh, and they all sound completely different. That would be the same as a demo. That would be like if you're you're ready to make your demo now. Right. Don't make your demo if you haven't got that because you can get it, it can somebody can sort of cheat and then you get your foot in it's so hard to get an audition you get that audition boy if the door is shut it's going to be really hard to get it open the second time right. mm-hmm. so my rule of thumb is 25 and that's before I'll produce or I'll even recommend them to you Chuck I'll say to them you know make sure you have 25 characters before you go to Chuck or before you, you go and uh, get out on the field. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because you, just like the, the, the Scottish dog, I keep bringing up this analogy to the <laughs> Yiddish dog, you know, I, I had to take a second and go call somebody. Fortunately, I had some Jewish friends I could quickly call and they answered, yeah. you know, and I could get, but, you know, have signature phrases, have it so that on a dime in that audition, you know, you can show them how versatile you are. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, just again, all these stories. When I did Reboot, I was Mouse, you know, this purple lady with pink hair who yeah. had this digitally perfect rear end, sugar. And, uh, you know, this uh, there, I got to play a sex symbol at least, you know, <laughs> even if it was just a voice. I'll, I'll never forget it. So they opened it up just to show you how they cast. We were the regulars in the show. We probably had about eight people that were at Mike's, and, and they opened it up to a new character that was coming on the show called Rocky. And they gave it to all the guys to audition. So the few women, Kathleen Barr and uh, myself and a couple other women were off to the side. Our mics, you know, they were still live, but we were just kind of sitting there like good little girls waiting for the men to all audition. And I had this voice that I was just dying to do that I'd been doing my whole life and no one had ever hired me for it. And I hope I can do it. But it's just a little voice like this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mm probably going to make me cough but uh, I haven't <laughs> that before this but anyway this little guy this little uh road runner guy eats everything <laughs> you know and 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 so i just started doing that yeah. on my mic and they started shutting down the men's mics because they were trying to find out who it was and they finally realized it was me around the corner who they couldn't even see and i got cast uh, that's uh, like, so Yay! cool. Yay! We love so that. That's how it works. That is lit- literally yep. how it works. Once you've now passed and you're a regular on a show, that's how you do. Mm-hmm. That's how they do it in The Simpsons, probably. Yeah. Stevie, what do you wish that every voice actor knew about your side of the equation that would make your job easier as a director? I guess that I'm, I'm the conduit. I've had 20 people executives in the room all screaming at me and my job is to condense it into one sentence to the to the the actor and to just tell them what I'm being told so I think perhaps I'm just thinking again going back to not taking it personally that it's not about me I'm trying to make it simple and I'm a communicator Mm -hmm. and um, you're trying to help them get the job I'm trying to help them get the job. I want to look good. I want them to do well. Right. You know, I am not there. I'm not in co- competition with them. I don't even audition anymore. I'm really wanting to keep an integrity with my directing and teaching. Mm-hmm. Right. So, well, but also in the session, I mean, you don't have a lot of time to produce that half hour. So, you know, I think the actor needs to respect that it isn't just about everyone sitting around listening to you. There are so many pieces to the puzzle that you have to get in and get out and do your job beautifully yep. and be a blessing to the situation because it's not it's not just that one piece. There's so many things that have to be accomplished in a, in a very short period. How long do you normally take, like for a while, Grinders, how, how long does it take to produce 
one episode. Well, we are we are so fast, and you're right about that. It is so fast, and it's like part of the reason I get hired is because I'm known as being fast. So, um, but not sloppy, mm -hmm. tight. You know, really trying to be succinct in my directing. Right. You know, we do two twenty. What are they? They're eleven minutes each. The, they're, they're now down. They're about 11 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. And they'll do two episodes uh, so that it equals 22 minutes with the commercials that comes out to half an hour. And we'll do those in uh, less than four hours, both episodes. That's two shows, complete arcs, you know, beginning, middle, and end. Mm -hmm. We've got incidental characters, probably about, oh, I don't know, anywhere, 30 different characters in, in that, that under, under four hours, possibly three hours. We'll do all that, which is pretty quick. Yeah, I mean, is. that's very quick. And that so is. I need actors that are going to be very quick. You know, know it. They've studied it. They, they're, they're, you know. And after a while, they can do it cold. After a while, you know, obviously, uh, the actors we worked with on Wild Grinders are just so incredible, and we could just put it cold in front of them, and they were so solid with their characters mm. that they could be spontaneous and again take risks, do it big. There's one for you. I would rather work with an actor that's too big than one that's too small. Yeah. Yeah. If an actor says, I can't, I say, next, because there's nothing I can do yeah. to make them do it. Yeah. If they say, oh, I can't, I just have to say, okay, next, because I'm I not I can't your... keep you. I can't let you stay here yeah. anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I can't make you do it. I can't make you have more energy. Absolutely. I can't, you know, make you... Um, be a woman if you're a man who's uptight about that. Boy, the Wild Granders cast, you know, we only had Erin Fitzgerald, the most amazing Erin Fitzgerald, who did all of the female parts. And she did a lot of the boy parts, too, and a lot of the male parts. Well, so a lot of the men, uh, Kel Mitchell played the queen, for instance. We have to get a lot of the men playing women. Mm -hmm. And they have to be unrecognizable as a man. Yeah. So yeah. very important to fully embody a woman if you're playing her, not do a mockery of, but really right, get into right. it. Right. And, and that's kind of an interesting thing that men uh, sometimes have a problem playing women. They'll do a mockery. Yep. And so to take the physical again is something I teach in my workshop a lot that really helps to, you know, take the physical, the body language kind of works from the outside in. It makes you feel a certain way. Yeah. Women, on the other hand, the hang up that I find with most women is playing sexy roles. They'll do a mockery of, they'll play a sexy woman or play a coquettish woman, you know, and, 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 and that can be funny, but it, it's way better if you can really get in touch with your sexuality, you know, um, and it's just richer and, uh, boy, you'll get a call back, you know. Mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It'll at least get you a call back. Oh, I get to work with that sex symbol director, Stevie Vallance. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, my goodness gracious. It does be therapy. I mean, I say that jokingly. I know a lot of other people say that, but it really is, you know, it's like a lot better than, than uh, you know, you'll get a lot more out of taking my workshops than, than going to group therapy, for instance. So. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Um, you and I were kind of chatting about this yesterday when we were doing our Skype test, but a lot of people say, oh, yeah, I'm a singer. I do this and I do that and I do yeah. that and, I, and I'm a singer. And then when you hear him sing, you go like, uh -huh. oh, they're that kind of a singer, <laughs> right? But we've been listening to some of your stuff. I mean, oh, you, you have five albums five. out, right? And we, we, I was listening to some of your stuff and Stacy and I were just going like, holy Toledo, this girl can freaking sing. The texture. And, just and beautiful. It is just I mean, yeah, such a great, great amazing. sounding voice. And I, I definitely want people to, 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 to go and listen to your stuff and buy your stuff. Can we talk a little bit about your whole singing thing? And, and, Absolutely. And, yeah. You know, also what's great is that my animation, voiceover, and anima anything to do with cartoon, it has paid for my five CDs. So I've, mm. I've been able to produce myself. Fortunately, it's in self-promotion. It wasn't, you know, 15 years ago, it was sort of taboo to right. promote yourself and produce your own stuff. Now it's cool. Just like yeah. doing animation voices. I kept it off my resume. Now it's cool. Isn't that great karma? That's such yeah, a yeah, karma. Yeah. <laughs> so, and now that I'm getting older, I get to play vintage and put all those songs that I did in musical comedies, which is another thing. Animation acting is very much like musical comedy acting. Let's put on a show. Bah, 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 and they sing. It's just a little higher energy. 
is the cartoon acting. It's just like cartoon acting is like musical comedy goose, I like to say. Mm-hmm. But anyway, all those wonderful, you know, from 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 um, Irving Berlin, from, uh, you know, um, Summertime. Um, I'm just trying to think all these. Summertime and the living is easy. Yeah. You know, all that stuff is just like now it's my time uh, to just make become a jazz singer and, mm-hmm. and, and sort of like not let them go to waste. Uh, it's like all my spandex dresses from L.A. I, can, <laughs> I have to sing. I have to sing because I've got to wear them. They cost me so much money. <laughs> Later the waiter had me arrested, took me to Bellevue where I was tested. Had me a doctor pulling my noodle for he was half done and taught him to doodle showed him hidden thoughts that linger find them out right through your finger doodling away i mean there's very interesting reasons why i became a a, a jazz singer um again it's very much about being myself it doesn't yeah. matter what you look like it's about being uh spontaneous it's taboo to rehearse mm-hmm. uh jazz musicians do not like to rehearse You've got to know your, your, your standards. You've got to know what key. Uh, you've got to know Cole Porter. You've got to, you know, you've got to know all of the, the greats um, and have that repertoire ready with whoever you're singing with. I went to Europe, and, and I, went in, I went to the south of France, to Nice, and I walked into some of those wonderful little cafes with, with, with my 10, 10 to 20 standards, and I knew uh, Lullaby de Berlin, key of de. Un, deux, un, deux, trois, quatre. And away we went. I sang in English. Nobody in the band spoke English. I had a German drum player. I had an Italian bass player, you know, and, but we all knew the standards. So it's one of those things that you can do anywhere in the world, singing jazz. So I guess it's just the freedom and just being myself. I really love that aspect. Um, and the other thing that I do is Patsy Cline. Yep. I toured at Patsy Cline. I'll send you my CDs. I'm going to send you guys the CDs. You have to. Uh, you have to. I will, definitely. But, uh, you know, that was a really cool thing. I got to tour Western Canada doing Patsy Cline. It was just around the same time I went up to do Madeline in Vancouver. A friend of mine was doing Patsy Cline. said, I didn't know anything about country. Uh, and then of all things, Kat, Patsy Klein's born on the same day I am. We had the I was going to say, you guys share a birthday. I love that. That is cool. Well, I so, wanted to say, um, I was reading about your music. I'm a little bit obsessed. Um, in a... In a healthy stalker yeah, way. Yeah, in a healthy stalker <laughs> way. Um, but a critic said about your first, your debut jazz CD, Practically Naked, it's an unforgettable piece of music history sung with a warmth and grace that sends shivers down the spine. That's yes, a that good one. Nice. I love that. That's a good one. What about and, that? And this is about your fourth CD. Paul Grant, the host of the CBC Radio's Hot Air, said that Valance's voice sounds fabulous, mature, well-recorded, comfortable, Wait for it and sexy. So you are yes. a sex symbol. Your voice is a sex symbol. <laughs> and it comes from in. Sexy comes from inside out. So bam, boom, check it off. You are a sex because, symbol. You know what? I have not been singing lately. I have to admit, I've been getting so into my directing and teaching. And you are making me want to go back to singing. So I think I'm going to have to start booking some gigs again. I smell oh, album God. number six. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> absolutely. I just came out with a new one that's a cabaret. Um, I don't know. We were going to take it to New York. It's um, David Shire, David Frischberg, and David Warwick, and we're calling it Three Davids. And it's just, I don't know if you know who David Frischberg, he wrote, Peel Me a Grape, which Diana Krall made famous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, David Shire wrote, you know, On a Clear Day and made Barbara Streisand famous and everything. And it's just a wonderful off-Broadway uh kind of little musical cabaret review that I'm hoping to do. We, I just came out with that CD. Um, so it's very different for me to do that. A lot of words, very Sondheim, very uh, mm-hmm. in the sense that there's a lot of words. That's so cool. Um, well, how can so, people get your music? Yeah. Um, they could just, you know, that's terrible. I've got to get better about selling it. Uh, but <laughs> she doesn't like to sell her music. <laughs> you know, I do just do it for wearing the spandex and for the love of it. You know, there I you just, go. I love, I love to be able to, to just have the live audience feel. Cause I've taken that away as a director. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I, I get to have, you know, a workout in front of an yeah, audience. Yeah, there is nothing yeah. like that. 
And and uh, so I would just say, you know, probably one of these days I am going to get it more together with CD Baby. But I think if they are available through CD Baby, if you just go to stevievalance.com and you go to the artist section. Yeah, you can um, hear the tracks. Yeah, you it's can wonderful. go there. And I think there is a way that you can buy them. Um, you can yeah. always just send me an email. And if there's not, then you just have to wait and take our word for yeah. it. She's awesome. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> it's it's fantastic. So much. I love no, it. I really love doing Patsy Cline, too. And Patsy Cline does a lot of, it was actually a blues singer who did country so it kind of is accepted when I sing jazz you know people yeah. go oh no country is not allowed when you mm -hmm. sing jazz but somehow the two work and I, I want to do I've done something called jazz inclined which is really great where I do like a jazzy version of some of the Patsy Cline stuff oh, nice. and I, I, I had such a great time I opened for the Calgary Stampede it was amazing in Calgary I was Patsy Cline for like six years on and off I got to meet her husband Charlie wow. Dick he came up and met me I would have been so nervous I didn't always in the audience thank God <laughs> but, um, you know, so that was a whole chapter of my life doing Patsy Cline. It was such a strong woman, such a pioneer woman uh, to, have, you know, made the first, first, first woman on the charts. You know, can we, can we hear a yeah. little bit of your Patsy Cline? What do you want to hear? I don't know. What just do, whatever. Yeah. We want to hear your little Patsy Cline in, in front. I go a walking after midnight out in the moonlight. Just hoping maybe I'm walking after midnight searching for me. Yay! <laughs> I I, you know what I love about Stevie is that she is such a ham. She will do anything well, you tell her to do. I was going to say, I mean, I really, it's a shame you're so introverted. I'm hoping you could just come out of your shell yes. a little bit. This is like getting a just little a awkward, little bit. you know? Just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> um, uh, I gotta so, what I talk right. Absolutely. Well, so great, man. And it. earlier, you mentioned that you wanted to talk about acting down. Oh, yeah. What, what is I that? I wanted to say, just kind of like, I think that animation voiceover acting is the top when it comes to voiceover acting. It's the highest you can go. Yeah. Because... When I call agents sometimes, maybe not so much now. Now they kind of even have a department within voiceover that they call, that they just have the animation people within. But yeah. back, before it was like they would send me like their cigarette person. They would send me their, <laughs> their smooth talking narrator or something. And I could not get them to have more energy and go outside the box and act big. Yeah. But a voice, uh, uh, an animation voiceover actor can act down. They can play the role of the promo guy. Yep. They can play the role of the narrator guy. Mm -hmm. They can play the DJ. It's just a role. So just remember that. I think that if you were to take one workshop only, you should take mine. <laughs> 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 you should take voiceover for animation anyway. And then and, and then Chuck will say perfect. Chuck will say the only person who should do your demo it would be me. Well, yeah. you know what? I I don't have time to make that. I will send people your way. Chuck. Oh, uh, you are so sweet. You guys are a great combination. Gosh, I'll tell you what, we'd have a hell of a time. Boy. Um, sweet. When I come goodness. to LA, I'll, I'll I'll stop by. That would be awesome. Absolutely, absolutely. That's definitely going to happen. Stevie, you are so great about social media. You've got wonderful pages. You give away great tips. What are the places, what are the best places for people to keep up with you, your upcoming workshops, and just to stay connected? Well, I would say Facebook. I, I love Facebook. I, I just think it's fantastic. I mean, uh, apart from getting in touch with friends and things, it's just a wonderful way for people to get in touch with me for my for my workshop. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, if you just ask to be my friend, if I see anything on your page, and I, I'm very good about, you know, checking out, um, just if there's anything on there that just remotely alludes to you being an actor in entertainment, I will sign you up to my secret voiceover group that's just for animation. I don't have that open. You can't find it on the search engines. Right. Mm -hmm. So the bad news is you have to become my friend first and, uh, and then uh, I, and then that's I good. That's, actually a that's good thing. though. And you have a great voiceover group mm -hmm. uh, yeah. called Voice Di uh, Voice Directing by Stevie Valens. Is that it? That's the name of the group. And I put tips. I put casting. I cast the regular lead dog on Wild Grinders right off that group. Wow. He's never done a cartoon before. Um, he saw the post, and he was one of the people that sent in his MP3 and went right to network on it, and they loved him. Beautiful. And, uh, you know, so so there's definitely activity on that group. I've got network executives. I've got ex uh, executive producers. I've got writers. I've got animation artists, not just voiceover actors that are on it. Yep. And it's 
all about animation. It's the only one that I know of. I've got about 2,200 members on it now. Mm. That's so, um, and I work it, you know, I, I really, I yeah, really love it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I used to be a journal writer. I have journals that go back to when I was six years old. Me I stopped too. a couple of years ago because I was so into Facebook, but I think that's why I like it so much. It's like at the end of the day, it's like John Boy or the Waltons, you know, saying goodnight to everybody. I know. I've I written journals. I've, I've, I still write in my journals. I love it. Yep. Excellent. Very yeah. good. You Very, guys are I like really the twin sisters that. I know. That's I, the think you're the, I think you're the fifth sister that my parents don't mention. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to talk I think to you, Mom. It's cool that we're both Virgos. I think that's I know what... our birthdays are two days apart. I love it. Wow. Um, so I would say just get in touch with me on Facebook. I mean, I've got the Twitter tuned in class. Uh, I don't do Twitter as much, but I do mm-hmm. post on that um, LinkedIn. I don't accept people on my LinkedIn um, proper because that's just for my voice directing. So that is just for me to be able to talk to producers, right. and they wouldn't take me seriously if I had, you know, thousands of voice actors. But I have a company on LinkedIn that's called Tuned In. I think it's Tuned In Casting and Voice Direction uh, for Animation. That's what it's awesome. called. So you could look that up and become a follower of that. Um, Beautiful. But I would say Facebook's probably the best uh, way to start with me and um, and then just get all those wonderful juicy tips. You're networking with voiceover actors from all over the world mm-hmm. um, and I will put all of my casting on there and there are other casting directors starting to post their uh, animation stuff as well. Beautiful. That's fantastic. Love it. That's beautiful. I think that in closing, we would like to ask you a question and you can take your time thinking about it, uh, but in your career... Okay, and even personally, what do you think you're most proud of? Yeah. First thing that came to mind is my love for animals. And I don't know whether I'm proud of that, but I mean, there, I just, I have two dogs and I've had dogs in my life for a very long time. Yeah. I've, had, I've had like seven dogs mm-hmm. altogether or something, but you know, um, uh, you know, I'm very proud of, I guess, my philanthropic work with uh, Divas for Life in yep. Vancouver. Um, I got to work with six, we did six women at a time. I guess there were about 12 women all together and we raised 70 grand and gave every penny of of it away to, uh, friends for life organization, which was really wonderful. So I'm very proud of that. Um, people showed up at their best. It wasn't just me. It was just when you do things for no money, it's a funny thing. Um, the people who sign up, they're not doing it for what their union will allow them to do. They're not doing it for what their contract says. They give everything mm-hmm. and there's no, there's no boundaries. So I really, there's something about doing philanthropic work where you get to meet people at their best. Yeah. And um, okay. so something very addictive about that. And I'm sure I'm going to end up doing something more with Divas for Life. We recorded a, a CD from that and money continues to go to that organization, which is really wonderful. It's all jazz and it was done live to tape and mm. we recorded, there were like, 1,250 people in this huge, I'll never forget, you could hear a pin drop, and every cent of their $25 for their seat went to this organization. It was so nice to be able to say that there's no heavy promotion media person. You know, I was doing it all. So I've become kind of a, I I am a workaholic. Uh, I I love what I do. (laughs) I love what I do and I love yeah. that I get paid for it. And I would say singing and all about voice is so freeing because it doesn't really matter what you look like. And mm-hmm. I think that's really, um, that's something uh, I guess I'm proud of personally that I, it's freed me up a lot from wanting to be the sex symbol. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't worry about it so much. But so, kidding aside with that, I don't know how we got on that. But uh, we've tapped know, a nerve. Yeah, it's very liberating, and yeah. um, I'm very proud that I uh, can help people um, be themselves, uh, you know, fall on their butts and get paid for it. And, uh, and the more that I can do that and, and, and help people to enjoy making mistakes and sharing that aspect of not being hung up on doing it right, you know, there's something like the little bad kid in me. It's, it's like I'm getting paid to do what I got kicked out of high school for doing. Of it's there's something naughty yes. about it yes. and getting other people to do it and, 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 and feel the freedom of that is just, I don't know, it's there. I think if I was to do it again, I would be a therapist. And, and because I didn't want to go back to school, in a sense, this is therapeutic for me Absolutely. to be able to direct and teach people to bring out 
those personalities and not yeah. care what other people think and then get paid for it. So yeah. I guess bonus. I do. I'm That's very, a big bonus yeah. right there, yeah. man. Yeah. Wow. Well, we are such huge supporters of you. Thank you so much for all you do. Thank You're you such a so gift much. and a blessing. We Absolutely. love you so much. And um, thank you for, for spending this time with us and giving such incredible information and insight to our viewers. You guys, I know that they've got a lot out Absolutely, without of it. a doubt. I mean, we got some inside scoops there. If you guys didn't take a bunch of notes and you and use them to your advantage, you're freaking nuts. If you're not replaying this a few times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. So now I can start talking in my normal voice. Yeah, <laughs> yes, you can, Stevie. You can oh, play okay. now. Now you can <laughs> play. <laughs> that speech therapy is amazing. It's really yeah, working. Absolutely. Oh, you mean the camera's rolling? Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. Well, back to no, we're going to start now. Now we've rehearsed. Yeah, now we're going to actually rehearse. Yeah, that was rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, hey. Okay, Wonderful to meet you guys. Oh, thank you, And we'll you, see sweetheart. you next time yeah, here in absolutely, LA. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Happy we'll see you guys visit. next time. Hi, I'm Stevie Valance, and I just got buzzed by Chuck and Stacy. And I really feel that I have been on the Oprah Winfrey for voiceover. So thank you so much for having me. I've made it now. Well, that is the end of the coolness, the madness, the amazing, the information, the everything Stevie Valance. But the good news is we will be back next week with an all new episode just for you. Yes, we will. And keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest at VO Buzz Weekly. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. We love you. And just remember, you, you always, always have time, time for a little, little buzz. buzz. Give me five, baby. Woo!